What's going on, everybody? Welcome back to TTP Ravens Media, bringing you Ravens content every single day. If you want to see that daily Ravens content, make sure to subscribe button down below, hit the notification bell as well if you want to be notified every single time I upload a brand new video. Before I get into anything, I want to say thank you all so much. We just hit 4K subscribers. I think we hit it yesterday or the day before. Uh, we just hit 4K. So thank you all so much for coming through and you know helping out the channel over the last uh, three years it's almost been. So you know we are really appreciative of that. We're excited for what's to come. I also just finished watching the Sixers-Celtics game. That was great. So I'm in a pretty good mood right now. I was rooting for the for the Sixers in that one. But in this video today, I'm talking about cornerback again. I think it's like the third time in four days. Because it's still a position of concern. And I saw, you know, very happy comments talking about the Rocky Sin signing and Brandon Stevens switching over to safety. But there were still a lot of comments concerned about number two outside corner. I saw people saying that Rocky Sin was not somebody that you could rely on to be an outside corner. I saw people saying that, you know, they don't think we really have that number two guy and they think we need him. Then I also saw people mentioning Marcus Peters. Also saw people mentioning Jair Alexander. Let me just say, I would love Jair Alexander. Don't think it's happening. I think he's too good of a player uh, for the Packers to try to trade. But if they do, I would love for EDC to get it done. That's all I'm going to say on that unless you know reports come out about Jair and the Ravens, which I'm not expecting whatsoever. But in this video today, I'm talking about a subject that was mentioned in the John Harbaugh press conference after day two um, of the rookie practices. Because obviously the main topic that I focused on yesterday was Brandon Stevens switching over to safety or at least focusing on safety rather than outside cornerback. But people also asked about Marcus Peters and John Harbaugh did not said that basically the door was not closed on Marcus Peters returning because of the signing of Rocky Austin. And I think a lot of people are writing out the fact that we could very well still re-sign him for a cheap deal. And we do have the space. This was the subject that all Ravens fans were talking about all off season. How do you create cap space? The best way. The best way to create cap space was for the Baltimore Ravens to extend Lamar Jackson. It would save $15, $20 million in cap space by extending him. And this year, because of the extension, Lamar Jackson is a $22 million cap hit. And just for fun, if Lamar gets uh, just he, if he gets cut before June 1st, it's $135 million of dead cap. I always just think that those like dead cap numbers are pretty funny. Obviously, I'm not expecting him to get cut or anything like that, but $22 million. That's way less than what it was before. The Ravens currently, per over the cap, have $13.4 million in cap space. The Ravens always spend to the max of the cap. And so that begs the question of who are they going to go after? Because I think there are still multiple players that the Ravens are looking at to potentially sign. Obviously, they want to see what they have in their rookies. That is, that is the first thing they are focusing on the current players they have in hand. And a lot of veterans don't like to sign contracts until after OTAs, until after like mandatory minicamp, because kind of sucks. And I think the biggest example of that is Jadavian Clowney. He notoriously hates it. And so like every time he signs to a brand new team, it's always after the mandatory off season programming, he always signs. And then it's like, he kind of starts slow and it kind of sucks. But for the players that have been in the Ravens organization, have been in the building, including Marcus Peters, it could be something where they wait a little bit and they see, Oh yeah. You know what? We do want him back. Think about how long it took last year to resign Justin Houston. It was like, wait, are they actually going to do it? We lost faith a little bit. And then all of a sudden it was like the draft happens. The Ravens draft an edge rusher in David Ojabo. And it was like, mm, are we going to bring back Justin Houston? We brought in JPP a few weeks ago and then nothing really happened. And then we waited, we waited. And it was like, oh, Justin Houston signed. Then a little bit later it was like, oh, JPP signed. Because they like to see what they have before they you know, go out and spend all that money. Because they are planning. They are looking at, are there any players to trade for? What positions do we really need? Do we need a wide receiver? Do we need a corner? Do we need an offensive lineman? Do we need an edge rusher? Because they have the money to get any of those positions. They probably have the money to get two of those positions. You know, you can get somebody at six and a half million dollars. That is a very good player. Um, I think Justin Houston would probably sign to something similar to that type of contract. One year, six and a half million dollars. And you just have a, you know, a big signing bonus. He, he gets the cash up front. Um, same with the JPP. 
I think the same could be said about Marcus Peters. I don't expect him to sign a very large contract because I don't think a lot of teams are heavily invested in going after Marcus Peters. I think the Ravens probably view him as high, if not higher than every other team in the NFL. And they like him. It's very clear the Ravens do like Marcus Peters. As much as I have I've talked down on Marcus Peters because I don't think he's the player that he used to be. When Marcus Peters first came to the Ravens, I was all in. I love Marcus. I love that first year. After he got that injury, though, um, his play has decreased. And the hope is he returns to form. You know, last year was the first year back from that, you know, injury. But the Ravens cornerback position currently is not the best. Um, it is better. It is okay. I'm not trying to hate on it, but I talked about it yesterday. We, we have a lot of people or two days ago, I believe we have a lot of people vying for that cornerback two position. If we bring in Marcus Peters, I feel like he would be the clear number two because of how the Ravens have run their defense recently. But again, I don't necessarily think it is the smartest of moves because from everything that we've seen in the Ravens, you know, decisions this offseason, going after slower cornerbacks, not drafting, you know, a safety, getting rid of Chuck Clark, trading him for a sixth or seventh round pick, a very late day three pick, then transitioning Brandon Stevens over to safety, drafting these slower cornerbacks. It looks like they are trying to play very close to the ball, very close to the line of scrimmage underneath coverage with safety help over the top. And that's not necessarily what you want Marcus Peters to be doing. You want Marcus Peters in the one-on-one situations where he can bait the quarterback and end up making a play. So if the Ravens are trying to play two over the top, I don't necessarily think that's the best system for Marcus Peters to be able to thrive at what he does best, which is getting those interceptions when the quarterback thinks it's one-on-one and he's all fine and dandy. That's what he does best. That's what Marcus Peters does better than anybody in the NFL, probably in the last 15, 20 years is intercept the quarterback and bait them. That's what he does. But in my opinion, I think the Ravens should go after edge rusher. I think if they get a good pass rush and they have these good safeties over the top, that is the biggest thing that they need to work on. And it's not about getting a pass rusher to be out there every snap. I'm fine with Ojabo and then, you know, whoever's across from sometimes Tyus Bowser, sometimes Adafi away, sometimes Tavius Robinson. But I think if we bring back a Justin Houston as well as a JPP, I would love to bring them both back. I think that would be the best thing for this defense because what is the best way to help out your cornerbacks? It's to make the quarterback throw the ball faster. The less time that you have to cover a wide receiver, the better. Because it is impossible to cover any NFL wide receiver for an extended period of time. It's just too difficult. That is why you always see that the best secondaries in the NFL, they also have good pass rush. It's very, like last year, I think the Eagles were one of the best secondaries in the NFL, right? They had a lot of interceptions. The quarterbacks were struggling against them. Well, why was that? Was it because they have Darius Slay and CJ Gardner-Johnson and uh, Bradbury? No, it wasn't. It was because they had Fletcher Cox. They had Hassan Reddick. They had Brandon Graham. They had, uh, I mean, they had like 30 guys that were all pros on the defensive line. So (laughs) they had a lot of players. I don't want to go through every single one of them. I probably can't name them all off the top of my head right now. But they had a great pass rush, which meant quarterbacks had to throw it out early, which allowed for Darius Slay and Bradbury to get all those interceptions, all those deflections, and then their numbers look better. Not, not They are great players. I'm not trying to disrespect. They still were one of the better secondaries in terms of just secondary personnel, but the pass rush elevated that. The San Francisco 49ers don't have a great secondary, but they great have a great pass defense. Why? Because their secondary doesn't have to cover very often because they have Bosa, right? They have Fred Warner. They have you know these guys that are rushing the passer. I believe they had Samson Ebucom last year. All these guys rushing the passer are getting there quickly, and that is forcing the ball out faster, which is reducing the big play, and it is forcing interceptions and forcing incompletions when you get that quick pressure. That is what makes great pass defense. It's not great secondary play. Obviously, you need good secondary play, but it's great pass rush. 
That's why when the Ravens had prime Marlon, prime Marcus Peters, they still struggled against the Patrick Mahomes, against the Josh Allens, against the Joe Burrows. It wasn't because the secondary wasn't good. It was because the secondary had to cover for five, ten seconds consistently, and nobody's going to be able to do that. You could put out Prime Night Train Lane, Deion Sanders, and Darrell Rebus. They're not covering guys if you can't get to the quarterback and make them throw the football. If you guys have ever played Madden, you love when they throw nobody in the pass rush. Why? Because you just sit there. And yeah, they may have all 99s and it's ultimate team and you have all bad players. Eventually, someone's going to get open. I think the Ravens should bolster pass rush rather than going after a guy like Marcus Peters. If we ended up signing Marcus Peters, I wouldn't be too upset as long as we don't use up all the cap space and we still got an edge rusher. That is what I believe we should go after. It's still edge. I think Justin Houston's been really good for the Ravens. I think he would still help out the team. And I think he'd be willing to come back. Let me know in the comment section down below your thoughts. Should Marcus Peters make a return to Baltimore? And if so, how much would you pay him? Thank you all so much for watching. Subscribe for daily Ravens content. And I'll see all of you again tomorrow.